we're meeting uh, virtually at uh, 7 o'clock um, on August 24th, 2020. And the first item of business that we have is the approval of the minutes. I can't read the date here. Let me see. It's uh, 8-3-2020. Uh, has everyone had a chance to take a look at the minutes? Make a motion. Yes. yes. Any uh, any comments, corrections? No. Nope. Anyone? Are we are uh, seeing none. I'll accept a motion to accept. Motion made. Second. Right, a second. Okay, we have a second. Made a second. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Uh, we'll have a roll call. Uh, Ernie Pachikowski. Aye. Brian. Aye. And myself. Uh, aye. Uh, the second agenda, the second item on the agenda is a uh, site plan approval signed for Norwood Spice 655 Washington Street Patrick uh, you have the information on that yep just one moment All right, so the sign application is for a sign in the Central Business District. It's at 655 Washington Street. Um, if you're all familiar, this is where, uh, where Victoria's Pizza uh, is located. Uh, so the applicant is proposing to install an aluminum flat sign that will be covering the awning face. The awning itself is not being proposed to be removed. Um, for for sign for sign area, we usually me measure what can fit in in terms of lettering. So it's even though if the sign is physically itself larger than thirty square feet, um, we just measure um, basically the smallest uh, dimensional um, for the lettering. So for this one, it came out to a little bit over thirty square feet. So that is actually not in compliance with uh, zoning bylaw six point two point sixteen point two. However, there is a provision in there that if it was to be um, uh, up to 5% of the facade, um, the square footage were to be at least 5% of the facade area, it would be compatible. So I guess if the um, if the sign applicant is here right now, if he just wants to kind of address that in terms of whether the, the lettering either should be reduced to be th uh, 30 square feet, or if they could provide um, a little bit more information in terms of uh, the facade area. Hi, my name is Chris. Uh, I'm from ONJ Sign and Awnings. Um, I can actually um, rework the lettering, make it smaller to fit um, to fit the thirty square feet. Um, okay. Yes, yeah, so that was that was my only. Um, just looking at it, that was just the one thing. If if the, if the lettering itself can be compliant with 30 square feet, that's a little easier. Um, maybe easier than than showing the five percent of the facade area. Um, other than that, I had um, I'd also addressed the sign with Matt Walsh, the building inspector and zoning enforcement uh, agent, uh, just because I I'd never seen a aluminum sign covering an awning, so I just wanted to make sure um, you know Matt was aware and what his opinion was of it. Uh, I think to get approved for permitting. Through the building department, it will have to have a um, a stamped plan from uh, from an engineer that basically um, uh, uh, explains how that sign is um, um, or that that awning is structurally stable to hold up that sign. So that was just one other comment with this sign. Um, but if if the sign were to be um, planned for thirty square feet, I would recommend approval. And that's all I have. Is this something? Uh that we would have to wait until we got the new information, or is this something we could vote on tonight? You can vote on this tonight. With a condition? Yeah, if, if the applicant is gonna 
provide a new rendering with um, reducing the dimensions of the lettering to be compliant with 30 square feet, um, then that's okay in my book. Okay, so we can put a condition on it. Um, Patrick or Paul, have you ever seen uh, this type of sign go over an awning? And I was just curious as to how it works. Um, I was uh, wondering if it's been done before. I don't think it's been done downtown. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't. I don't recall seeing um, this approach by trying to fasten an aluminum sign to an existing awning. So I think it's probably a good idea that, um, uh, as Patrick indicated, that the applicant provide uh, um, information to the building department so the building inspector can make sure that the awning is going to be properly fastened to the awning. So that would be a second condition that we would want to make sure happens if we were to vote on it tonight. Yes. Okay. Uh, any other comments from any members of the board? Yeah. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Ernie. Mr. Patrick. Um, so um, I looked at this, and uh, so it's going to be a t it's this is going to be a white sign with black lettering attached to a maroon awning. Um, I w in all. To respect, so I'm sure the sign maker is doing what he was told. I think it looks like hell, and and I would either remove the awning and put the new sign in the in the sign block against the building, like say Limey's or whatever, or I would get the new awning. Um, to me, this looks like a temporary sign. Uh, again, it may, I may be wrong. I just, my initial thought of this is it, it's going to look awful and not what we're looking for. So uh, I appreciate that uh, the sign maker will, will reduce the, the letters. Um, and I'm, I'm sure he's doing what he was told to do uh, and make something that works. My opinion of it is, of what I can see, is it looks awful. Thank you. Brian. Um, I can't say I disagree with uh, Mr. Petrikorski all that much. Am I, am I mistaken that this building has those burgundy uh, awnings before every storefront? They're all similar, right? Am I, mis am I mistaken there? No, I believe that. The awning is only unique to that store itself. But that particular one, I might have confused it. Um, I do agree that it, uh, depending on, first of all, is is this just painted on a, on a aluminum or is it embossed in any way? It's just painted on, correct? No, so this would actually be, um, it's basically just a flat sign. It will be vinyl stickers on a white aluminum board, pretty much. I can't help but agree that it does have that temporary uh look to it um I, I just think it would be more appropriate if if it were uh on an awning similar to the existing uh entry that exists with the business that's there now I however uh, yeah sorry sorry to interrupt you i completely agree um it's just um this is um my the client is just trying to um save money in every, every possible way i mean he is starting up a new business so his point was just to save money mr chairman okay. yes you understand just uh, going back to it uh, i understand that the sign maker is doing what he's told and and i appreciate the the, the new business is trying to save money um these aren't even embossed letters. These are just stick, peel and stick type letters on the sign. Um, correct. They're, they're not raised, right? Are they are they raised? No, they're they're vinyl stickers. Um, they you know they're high tech vinyl stickers, so they're not gonna peel off or anytime soon. I I. I, I, you know, it's the first time I've ever done it, but I can't, I can't go along with this sign. I, I would go back to the client and he wants a new business. I mean, 
you know, your curb appeal. So what's the first thing you see when you walk in, you know? It just looks too temporary. It just doesn't, to me, it just doesn't look good. I, I sorry. Thank you. I, I think um, I see a trend here. It, it seems to be that the better thing to do would be for uh, you folks to go back to the uh, drawing board on this one. Um, it, it doesn't look like a promising uh, vote tonight. Um, and there are a number of questions. Um, maybe you could uh, find out and work through uh, our plan planners to see what might you might be able to do to to get a better product out there, a better sign. And we could probably postpone this till our next meeting. And you could come back with something that's more appropriate. Mr. Chairman, yes. If, if the um, if the new business owner likes having an awning, um, then he should remove the the current uh, fabric and have uh, the have it have the new awning placed on there with a lettering for the new business, and and then it'll look right. Um, but I, I agree with the board members. Um, this looks. Uh, cheap and temporary and that's not the image that we're trying to promote in our downtown um so i'd recommend that the board uh you can either continue the hearing um uh and wait for another sign to come back or you could deny it and they can reapply i um uh, i i don't mind postponing it if uh our recommendations are taken seriously and let me ask uh, the gentleman if they could have something together by the time we next meet, and should we postpone till then? Um, we can definitely have something um, put together. We did um, send the um, the client um, several different designs, and you know, again, it was just to save money. This is this is what he went for. Um, I do agree. I don't like it, um, but I just have to do you know. We'll, what the client wants. Um, now, there was another option where we do, again, almost the same type of frame, but this would be a, a metal frame that we would attach to the front of the awning, to the face, but we would cover it with awning material and we would paint it. It would just um, basically project an inch more than what it currently is. Uh, it would literally just go right in front of the current phase. We're just covering Victoria, Victoria's Cafe. I, I think we'd have to get a drawing or some some representation of what it looks like. Uh, I mean, that's an option. All options are on the table, certainly. But I, I think you've heard what the board members have had to say and take that in uh their advice on that so paul are you familiar with what he's speaking of by no i i agree that we need to have a new plan submitted for for us to evaluate so I, i'd recommend that the board continue the hearing to um to our next meeting i'll take a, a motion to that effect do we know in our next meeting what is the date just so that we're on board for that everyone's on the same page That's the 14th of September? Yes. All right, so I'd recommend that the hearing be continued to um, September 14th at 7.05 p.m. Do I'll, I make hear a motion. I'll make that motion. Okay, do I hear a second? Second. Is that Al? Hello, Al. Hi there. Uh, I put the log in while there and I didn't want to interrupt you, but I'll give you that second. Okay. Uh, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? It, it appears to be 4 0. I'll do a roll call. Brian Hatchie? Aye. You vote, how do you vote on this? Postponement? I was, I was muted. I apologize. Aye. Aye. Ernie Pachkowski? Aye. Al Poro? Aye. 
and myself, Joe Sheehan, I. Seeing that uh, Al has arrived, uh, I believe it's time to hand the reins back to the chairman. Before, before you go, Christian, um, I'll reach out to you tomorrow just to, just to kind of convey what we discussed here today and, um, and any questions. Um, now feel free to contact me, you know, anytime tomorrow. All right, awesome. I will talk to my client and I will send you um, uh, basically a new plot plan. All right, that'd be great. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. All right, have a great night, guys. You too. Thank you. Well, thank you, Mr. Sheehan. Let me uh, tell you, I'm in a little difficulty here technically. And uh, and I had, the, I had the internet knocked off in the office with the storms over the weekend. So I am sitting here at my dining room table using my iPhone and my iPad. So you need to be patient with me. Okay. Um, let me just grab the agenda. And who do we have on next? So the next agenda item is the continued hearing for Big Y. Okay. Are we ready? Yes. 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 Yeah. Go right ahead. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Phil Mack on behalf of Cedar Realty. Um, with me, as far as I can tell on the screen, is uh, Charles Burkhart from Cedar Realty, Nate Mahonen from Bowler Engineering, and I believe we also this evening have a representative from the Big Y. Um, not this so much. Conference about, will now be recorded. Not so much to talk about the um, project itself, but uh, there have been numerous concerns voiced about the operations and uh, we thought it would be uh, advisable for you to hear it uh, straight from one of the well you should say the largest tenant in the uh, plaza um, kind of what we're doing recognizing that the three development really is uh, an entirely new uh, and I think much needed uh, facelift for the area both in terms of the physical layout and the operation of the plaza uh, where we left off last meeting, uh, we had a few outstanding issues, not too many, um, but we have worked uh, extensively with uh, Mr. Halkiotis and Patrick, um, and I will say they, they put us through the ringer, um, you know, not, not unreasonably, and I don't mean to even imply that, but they definitely made us do our homework um, with regards to really what is the, in the realm of the possible or not. Uh, regarding the access drive and the area between the parking lot and the river. Why did you uh, have them ride you hard in order to get that? Isn't that what we discussed at the last meeting, Councilor? It was. And like I said, I'm not, I'm not by any means complaining. I'm just uh, saying that uh, they executed your, your directives and we complied. Um, and I didn't mean it to be uh, anything other than that. Um, so in that regards, uh, we really did take a very hard look at that area. Um, un unfortunately, as far as shifting the drive lane over, it just didn't work. Um, it was mentioned in the last hearing that it could be done with a loss of about 20 spaces, maybe a few more. And once Bola really looked at uh, the impacts on turning radiuses, the public safety vehicles, so on and so forth, that number is actually about correct. And it turns out that we can't comply with the minimum parking zone uh, requirements. Um, if we did that as well as redesign the interior of the parking field um, to, to break up the pavements, uh, add landscaping throughout the entire site. Um, and so that, that was one issue. And then kind of part and parcel with this, was a discussion about the guardrail and the fence. And everybody agrees that the wire mesh underneath the guardrail neither looks good nor works particularly well. Um, so what we are proposing, and we've, uh, I believe, changed the plans to show this, is a chain link fence behind the guardrail 
Um, and in our discussions with, again, Paul and Pat, um, we have agreed that, uh, I forget if it's in a note, I'm pretty sure we put it in a note, but if it's not, Nate will correct me later, um, that that will be a, a covered chain link fence, either dark green or black, uh, depending on uh, what looks bad site, I guess. Um, so when you add the two together, uh, basically we're actually cutting off access to the brook, which from a conservation standpoint, uh, we expect at the, at the order of conditions hearing, which will be taking place here in a few weeks, uh, will be something that they actually want. Um, it, it effectively nullifies any possibility of using the side of, of this lot's property um, really is anything other than protection for the brook. Um, but we did, we did look at all of that. Uh, one of the things that we will be discussing a little bit in detail further, and I'll let Nate do most of this talking, is what the guardrail looks like. We all agree that currently it needs uh, significant repair and uh, refacing. Um, we are proposing to basically replace all of the damaged sections, repaint the entire thing. And if that were the way the board was uh, disposed to proceed, we would uh, absolutely agree to a condition of approval that the same be maintained in a state of good repair. Um, and, and, but again, that will be uh, discussed a little bit more uh, with, with Mr. Mahoney. As far as the pedestrian access, again, we worked with, uh, you can see a theme here, we worked a lot with Paul and Patrick. Um, and the engineers looked at it, town looked at it, Mark Ryan looked at it. Um, and really the good answer for improving pedestrian access involves getting off the sidewalk somewhere at the beginning of the Santander lot, walking, along their lot line, if you will, across the front of the bank and then connect the two with striping to the big Y. Um, anything else actually, I can't say it's impossible, but it makes for a fairly convoluted and respectfully somewhat unsafe um, voyage through the center of the parking lot. Um, what we have or will commit to is to work or at least contact with, contact the uh, Santander folks. And I'm using that and I don't know that the uh, Santander actually owns that lot, but we'll figure out who owns it and we will contact them and see if we can't work out something um, to do exactly what I just proposed. And I would propose that we report back to the planning board or the planner as, as you uh, deem appropriate um, in six months to, to tell you where we stand at that. We're not opposed to working out something there. It's just we don't own the property. Um, and so that, that kind of became that issue. And then as far as uh, the remainder of the discussions from La the last hearing we had really involved the back of the site. Um, we made sure at this point that we reached out to all of the abutters, uh, the residential abutters um, that are shown on this plan, um, with the exception of one, and I thought I saw her as uh, one of the guests um, on the uh, screen here. We have had discussions with, uh, again, all but one, we reached out with her. I think uh, some phone tag was played over the weekend. Uh, I suspect she may have some comments, um, but I know Mr. Sheehan had expressed some concerns, valid at that, um, that we hadn't talked to everybody. We have now, and we have either written agreements with some folks, verbal agreements with others, um, as to uh, what what is gonna, what we can do in, in the rear to improve things. And kind of part and parcel with that, we've already provided the planning department a list and I believe they are going to require that we keep it updated with them and we have no problem providing the same to uh, our immediate abutters to the rear. Uh, basically contact the varying stories of Peter. That's not me. 
Uh, okay. And uh, again, we are, or I should say Cedar is uh, kind of plaza wide. We're looking at all the operations, um, who's delivering when, uh, they've relooked at leases, and again, I'll turn this over to Charles to talk more in depth. But we, we are taking this opportunity to do a few things that, quite frankly, aren't commonly done, um, and, and maybe should be uh, in reality elsewhere. But uh, I, I think it will be a significant improvement to uh, what what currently goes on now. Um, and as well, you have both Charles and Nate to talk through in more specificity everything that I kind of introduced there. Uh, with your permission, Mr. Chairman, I would like to turn it over to uh, Nate Mahonan. Uh, good evening. Just for the record, Nathan Mahonan, Bowler Engineering. Uh, just to pick up where Phil left off there, uh, just to quickly touch on the vinyl fence. He was correct in this description. Uh, six foot tall, vinyl coated. Uh, currently noted as forest green in color, uh, as discussed with uh, with Paul and Pat, to kind of provide a, a color that will blend in with the vegetation there um, and provide a nice screening facade along the brook. Relative to the guardrail, um, as Phil had noted, you know, currently proposing to repair damaged sections and repaint the guide rail uh, to give it a, you know, a nice new appearance. Uh, the rail is along the main access drive for the commercial parking area. Um, and from a site and operations perspective, you know, functionality and safety are the most important for the rail. Uh, we want to make sure it's a safe, functional rail for uh, the proposed use. Uh, to that end, you know, it is our, our uh, professional opinion that the steel rail is a safer alternative to the timber rail. You know, timber rails, they, they look nice, but there's no real vehicular crash rating to them. Um, and there's no um, real you know, safety rating that you can point to relative to, to, to the timber rail. You know, the steel rails have design guidelines and ratings to them um, that are uh, tested, proved, and you can point to and you can take a look at them. You know, the timber rails you generally see in, you know, lower traveled residential areas or things of that nature, or you know, at a at, you know along a small parking area um, and some of the smaller retail developments, but in a larger commercial center like this, again, we feel that the steel rail is a safer alternative. Um, there are a couple maintenance considerations with it as well. Uh, you know, the steel rail is obviously stand up better than timber, requires less frequent maintenance and repair, um, and it also you know help protect the uh, new fence that's being installed behind it. Uh, less likely to be damaged or damaged to the fence or impact to the fence and maintenance considerations there as well. May I interrupt mm -hmm. one second? This is Al Poro. Have sure. you, you considered <clears throat> on the guardrail, as you've seen, like when you go into a state park or other governmental things, they use a, it, it's a steel guardrail, but they use a, uh, looks like a rusting, if you will, or aging process on it that it rather than the hot, cold galvanizer hand painted that chips and falls apart. Have you looked into that by any chance? Um, I, I don't know if that's the retrofit option, to be honest with you, for maintenance and repair of the existing rail, or if that's something that's only um, provided as, you know, a, a new installation or uh, a new product. I, I actually don't know the answer. <laughs> Um, and then one other item at the rear of the site um, that we discussed at the last meeting was the drainage concerns and considerations at the back area here and the abutting property. Uh, we did uh, outline our proposed improvements for this area at the last meeting. Uh, subsequent to that, we have talked with the town engineer to review the proposed improvements here. And we are adding two additional upgrades uh, at his request in addition to what we're already proposing. Uh, the first is to increase the inlet capacity uh, by adding another grate at the proposed inlet at the back of the store here. And the replacement of this curb along the entire back length uh, will be uh, vertical concrete, you know, precast concrete curb rather than an asphalt bituminous, uh, just to allow for better wear and tear uh, in that area back there to make sure that we don't have um, you know, similar problems in the future should the, you know, the asphalt curb deteriorate. Um, so that's really a quick summary as to the additional change in the rear and some additional information relative to the front guardrail and fence. 
And at this point, I'll turn it over to Charles from Cedar Realty as we've got a couple other items he'd like to touch on as well. Hey, Nate, before you go, did you did you hear my request about you looking into the, the guardrail? Did I, I, was it a second request after my initial response and not knowing whether yes. it's feasible? Yes. Okay, no, I, I had not. Sorry, that cut out on my end. Okay. Yeah, that's something yeah. we should look into okay. to see if it's an option. I can't promise that it's something that we can be able to do. Very good. Okay, this is Charles Burkett from Cedar Realty for the record. Can you hear me? Great, great. I have a repeated last meeting. Um, not to put too fine a point on it, but one additional point about the guardrail. You'll notice if you drive in the plaza today, the guardrail does get used. So hence our concern about the ultimate safety of the rail doing the job it's intended to do, that guardrail has been hit before. Um, beyond me, why, you know, but it does serve a purpose there. And God forbid, we nobody wants to see a, a car go through that guardrail and go down the embankment. So, and we, we really feel it's aesthetically, you know, I understand the, the request for the wood. Uh, certainly we feel the, the metal guardrail is appropriate in this type of a shopping center. Um, I will leave it at that. We'll certainly look into the finish you were talking about and see if we can do that. Um, picking up on Nate and Phil's comments relative to the back of the shopping center, we, we have heard over the last couple of meetings numerous concerns voiced with respect to uh, drainage and noise and operations. And I just want to say a few words about those. Uh, first of all, over the past month, we're not we're not waiting for uh, board action here to, to act on some of the issues. Our property manager has been busy. He has replaced all the gutters along the back side of the Dollar Tree and the Planet Fitness. We've also replaced all the fencing. Uh, behind those two sections of the building. Um, so we, we've started some of that work already, but that's by no means, that's just a small portion of the work that would be done, provided uh, the project moves forward. There's very substantial drainage improvements that are taking place back there and a variety of other um, improvements that we've agreed to, provided the project moves forward in order to help screen and mitigate some of the impacts here. Um, as far as the operations, as Phil noted, we do have David Murphy, who's a regional operations manager for Big Y on the call. I want to give him a moment to speak, but before I do, I want to talk about, we have uh, over the past six weeks or so been meeting with all of the store managers in the plaza, most notably Big Y, Dollar Tree, um, and the liquor store, the, the tenants that take deliveries through commercial vehicles in the back end of the shopping center. And we have, we have rolled out sort of a new protocol here that we're going to um, make available to the board and to the abutters that gives people the a very clear, very direct procedure if there is an issue with regard to noise, fumes, what have you, that would violate uh, the town ordinance. Um, it gives them direct contact numbers and emails for the store managers, tells them what to do in terms of um, notifying the police if there's a, 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 a complaint. Um, and we've really drilled it into the managers and I think they all fully understand just how deeply and passionately some of the neighbors feel about this now because we've beat it into them and there's, they've been very receptive to that and they really want to be a good neighbor and have not, it's, we've had a, not had to twist any arms here to get them to agree to adhere to this protocol. Um, if I might, Chairman, I would like to give David Murphy an opportunity to say a few words about Big Y's operations going forward. Very good, thank you, Kelly. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is David Murphy. I'm the district director for Big Y Supermarkets. 
first, I'd just like to say that we're thrilled at the potential to have a world-class market delivered to the Norway community. Uh, we are fully aware that the current market is well out of date and uh, the, the market that we plan on building, if, if all goes well, uh, is something that the community really deserves and has never seen. So we look forward to that potential. Um, relative to some of the noise complaints that have been brought up to us and uh, to, just to reinforce uh, some of Charles' actions with the store managers, Charles mentioned that he, he beat it into them but I can tell you that uh, the Big Y organization from top to bottom is 100% behind all efforts to clearly and directly uh, address any noise concerns moving forward uh, with the community. Having Matt Knox, the store manager at the helm, will give us the opportunity to more directly and in a, in a basically real time uh, take point and address and solve any issues. Uh, in addition to, to putting Matt at the point, what we're doing as an organization is authoring a letter that uh, will be outlining all of the expectations for noise and curfew for the Norwood community. And that letter is going to be sent to all of our vendor partners. And uh, that will clearly outline Big Y's wishes and really demands that uh, these curfews, the curfews and delivery policies and procedures set in place are to be strictly enforced. And uh, somebody had mentioned that some things are being done here that are not commonly done. That's not commonly done in our organization. And that's just an attempt on our part to, to stay ahead of any issues by clearly communicating what the expectations are of the town of Norwood and of Big Y to all the vendors that we partner with. So hopefully these, these things that we're putting in place uh, will more directly and effectively address any issues that the, the abutters have. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Patsikowski. Uh, I just have a, to, uh, I believe it's Mr. Burkett. Uh, Charles. Yes. Uh, from, uh, there was a, Patrick, you may have the letter. I don't have it in front of me. I didn't know it. Uh, there was a letter sent to us today um, from the attorney for the liquor store. Uh, he, addressed, uh, he had some concerns about deliveries and things like that for his location. Have you seen that letter? No, I have not. I uh, will. He asked, he asked that it be read into the uh, uh, meeting tonight, and I don't have a copy on Patrick. You may have, you, you sent out the email. Do you have that letter? And then I would forward it on to. First, I, I did forward it to you originally. Do you want me to forward it to you again so you can read it? I, have, I don't have it in front of me. I read it today, but I want uh, Charles to get it. He doesn't have it, and uh, we should probably read it into the into the meeting tonight. Yeah, I was planning on doing that when uh, he wrapped up his presentation. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Al. I figure we'll have the clerk do that, Ernie. Okay. I believe okay. the clerk is not here tonight. Uh, Pat, if you have the letter, can you go ahead and read it? Uh, one second, let me just bring it up. And we have it. See, I wouldn't know how to do that, bring it up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm lucky I can do this. Didn't say I had it yet. Okay, this is uh, the, it's from the Volanzalo Law Group. If I may, I'm Eddie uh, Valenzuela. I'm the attorney for Route One oh, Liquors. Yeah, it's oh, from Valenzuela Law Group, and we sent that letter back on August 14th by first class mail and email. Thank you. To whom did you send it? Um, as you could see from the letter at the top, we sent it first class mail um, to, and then also email, and it was acknowledged received back on August 14th, I think, by. Uh, both folks in the planning, Paul got it, I think, and yes. um, they acknowledged back on August 14th, they got it and told me it, it had been circulated. Yes, but you had also requested it be read into the minutes. Yes, yep. Please. Okay. As the clerk is not here, I will uh, 
read it. It is, uh, we don't want to, 15 West Street, Attorney's at Law, 15 West Street, Mansfield, Mass, 02048. We'll skip the phone numbers and it's the email address of www.valenzolalaw.com. August 14th, 2020, Planning Board, Planning Department, Town of Norwood, 566 Washington Street, Norwood, Massachusetts, 02062. RE, 420 to 422 Walpole Street, Norwood, Mass. Referencing Big Y, redevelopment, in parentheses, the shopping center, close parentheses. Dear sir or madam, as you know, this office represents Route 1 Liquor Mart Incorporated, a current tenant in the shopping center. Please read this correspondence into the record during your next planning board meeting, hearing, excuse me, as part of the develop, redevelopment of the shopping center and in particular, the expansion of the big Y space, the owner applicant has proposed to relocate my client to the space that is shown as space. And I quote, hi, uh, two dash three on the phase three plan without conceding that the applicant landlord has the right under the lease with my client to relocate my client as proposed. My client has brought to the attention of the applicant landlord that there are a number of issues with the proposed plans. In addition to focusing on the proposed new space for Big Y and, the, and its impact on the shopping center, it is important that the applicant and the planning board address and resolve issues that will impact my client's use of the premises proposed for their use as shown in the plan. Currently, deliveries by 18-wheel trucks are made to my client's current premises through the day, through the, throughout the day, through a rear entrance to their current premises. The proposed expansion of the big Y shown on the plan would make it impossible for 18-wheel trucks or uh, parentheses, or almost any vehicles, end of parentheses, to park near the back of my client's premises. The trucks cannot be expected to park in the front and make deliveries through the front entrance that is used by customers, needless to say. Parking would not be permitted in the front of the building, parentheses, fire lane, close parentheses. And there would be the potential for serious injury to patrons of the shopping center when carts carrying cases of beer and other beverages are unloaded from the trucks and wheeled through the parking areas and into the front entrance used by customers. Deliveries are made through the day, which has, which has been done for years. My client's business is not in a position to dictate when deliveries can be made during the day, quote on uh, parentheses, unlike total wine and liquor, total wine and more, excuse me, close parentheses. There is also no space for my client to place a dumpster that can be accessed by a truck near the rear of the proposed premises. As you know, the rules and regulations of the Norwood Planning Board provide, among other things, that the site plan review is, quote, intended to protect health, safety, convenience, and general welfare of the inhabitants of the town of Norwood, end of quote. Planning board should not only consider big Y space, but also the other site specific conditions that affect other spaces in the shopping center. For example, section 4.05, of the rules and regulations require that the plans address, quote, drives, parking, a number of others skip to loading facilities, end of quote. I can go look it up in the book and I can read you the whole thing if that's necessary. My client specifically uh, requests, respectfully request that the planning board require the applicant to address the delivery and dumpster issues that relate to the use of my client's proposed premises. 
parking 18 wheel trucks anywhere in the front of the premises or in the parking areas cannot be an option and would also create an insurance and liability nightmare. This correspondence is being sent to you without, con con without con constituting a waiver of or pre pre prejudice prejudice to excuse me to any other rights claims or concerns my client may have in connection with this site plan review or its lease with the landlord or otherwise specifically my client is not con conceding that the applicant landlord has the right to relocate their business in fact they dispute that their lease allows this type of relocation I appreciate your attention to these issues and others that may arise during the site plan review that impact the premises proposed for my client, as well as the entire shopping center. Edward V. Sincerely. All right. In the right. Any comments? I have a comment, Chairman, if I if I might. Yes, you may, sir. Actually, when um, mention was made of this letter, I thought I would say that the letter was sent today, but I did see this letter back when it was sent. And we have discussed the contents of the letter. Um, first of all, let me say for the record that we have the absolute unequivocal right under the lease to relocate this tenant, notwithstanding what their attorney says. And that by the way, I don't, I don't even know why that is being discussed before the planning board as a landlord tenant issue. That was Charles, that I didn't want to interrupt you. I wanted to let you speak, but as a board, we are in agreement with you. That is a item you need to resolve. It's, it's something we will look like, look at at the plan, but it's something that you and your tenant needs to resolve between you. If I may, Edward Valenzuela, I only put that into the letter because I don't want at a later date, especially if the matter ends up in court, for anyone to argue that we conceded that they have the right to do this in the lease. We think they do not. This isn't for the planning board uh, you know, to address, I agree, but we're not conceding that they have this right to relocate us, at least not as they propose. That's the only reason we put it in there. Thank you, Mr. Valenzuela. All right. Furthermore, I don't know who decided for the um, the Bay State Liquor folks that the delivery loading would not work. We've looked at uh, truck turning radiuses in the back and we believe it would work. We also believe there's a room for a dumpster. We would never ever of having trailers unload in the front of the shopping center and don't need to be reminded of the inherent safety and other issues that that would present. So it was never our thought that that would be an option and we wouldn't allow it even if it were. Um, we think we can show that the delivery would, would work in back and we're prepared to sit down with the planning staff and illustrate it on a plan. And I think that's the only way to really show, you know, whether or not um, the, the tenant and their attorney uh, have a valid point here. We, we do not believe they do. If I may, Edward Valenzuela, I think my, with all due respect, my points are valid. And if you can address them, I think we'll make progress. Our concern is, will we have access with the 18 wheelers? And every plan I've looked at so far, including the phase three, doesn't, and, and as I indicate in the letter, it really doesn't address my client's space, access to it, deliveries, dumpster. What it does is it addresses big wise redevelopment you know, the, the facelift, the, the work that they're doing there. So these points are valid and hopefully you can address them and you can show us how an 18 wheeler truck, if you if you look at this plan or pull it up, the, the, the plan that shows the back, how an 18 wheeler truck can negotiate backing into and over by my client's new space at the end cap almost. And it, that doesn't mean, you know, the truck can't park behind big Y and you're not gonna get any of these delivery guys to use the the dollies that they wheel the liquor in um, to you know travel 
across the back of the shopping center, across Big Y to get over to my client space. They need to be relatively close. The same thing for the dumps. It needs to be relatively reasonably close. I think as we currently have, it has to be similar. Um, and as far as in the front, the reason we put that in the letter, I didn't just make that up. That's that's someone at uh, the landlord's office who has had those discussions with my client, suggesting that that could be a possibility. I wouldn't have put that in the letter. I've been doing this 40 years. I'm well aware of shopping center development. I was in-house for a national REIT. So it's in there because it was mentioned to my client. We're not trying to involve the planning board and the landlord tenant issue here, but this is part of the site plan review. Where are these trucks going to go? It was also discussed with my client that maybe there could be some sort of pad out in the parking lot where the trucks can go. Well, that doesn't work either, as you all know. What are you going to have? These uh, deliveries go across the parking area when you know customers are trying to negotiate, get to their automobiles with carriages and wheel through the front door when a customer's coming out with a bag of beer in their hand. So these are issues that we're, we're discussing with you because they've been, uh, they're either, you know, looking at the plans they're not addressed or they've come up in discussions with the landlord. And, uh, and that's why we're looking for some sort of a, a response that makes sense and hopefully satisfies everyone. Thank you, Edward. All right. Gentlemen, go to your corners, put on the 16 ounce gloves. I was kidding aside. No, um, <laughs> let's, uh, let's see if you can work it out and keep us informed, please. We'll so I, I guess I would ask, I don't know the procedure, if, if the landlord is, is going to you know, work on a set of plans and they have my letter, they have my email, uh, and maybe they can share with me and I can go over with my clients you know how they see our new site working um you know with respect to those issues and maybe we can we can make some progress outside of this hearing okay uh mr villain so i'm going to talk to inject inject here to mr yodas who has he and mr Duchesne have been working reviewing the plans and he'll take your your comments under review here and try to keep everybody informed as to what's going on. Paul, is that acceptable there for you? Uh, yeah, we'd be glad to uh, to host a meeting where we can look at the, the back of the building on the plans and um, um, discuss whether or not th there's room for, for 18 wheelers to negotiate uh, getting in and out of there properly. Um, we can bring in Mark Ryan, the town engineer, and ask him to take a look at those specific issues uh, and report back to the board what his findings are. Thank you. Um, any further comments? No, other than I'm quite confident, Chairman, that we can provide the backup to support what I Said, which is deliveries can be made to the rear as they as they all should be okay mr burkett i i i hope and i i understood it correctly that the access to davis avenue in the rear the, the, the phase three plan little schedule doesn't show it going beyond the back of the building that has been resolved with all your budding neighbors correct I'm not sure if I understand your question clearly. Okay, let me try it again. The uh, exits, entrance and exits, which mm -hmm. is in a horseshoe shape. Yes. The, the issues where the fences and stuff coming in, the roadway sides and issues getting in, turn, turning of vehicles, and then turning to exit, and then exiting back onto Davis Avenue. There were comments from a number of the different tenants, uh, the I'm sorry, uh, butters, that they had issues. Now, I, I believe you talked, a uh, young group talked to the, the different uh, uh, butters and have agreement as to what you're gonna do and is it satisfactory to them, is that correct? We don't, we don't have a finalized agreement um, with Mr. Mahano, we have a proposal. Um, to address the concern about his fence at the corner of Davis Avenue. We haven't been able to sit down and present that to him. 
but um, currently delivery trucks have no problems turning in and out of there. We have videos showing that how very clearly, but notwithstanding that fact, at some point somebody clipped his fence and we don't want that to happen ever again. So we're proposing to put some protection on the corner there. And in conjunction with that, we were asking the town if it might be possible to post a couple of no parking signs on the opposite side of the street, just to give the trucks additional swing room. Um, but again, we, we have video and photographs showing trucks coming in and out of there with plenty of room for the turn. We wanna improve that condition to placate any fears that that could happen again. That is the one entrance drive. The other entrance drive is the one bordered by uh, Mr. Hebner and Mr. Corcoran. And we have written agreements with both of them as to what we're doing along that access. And regarding the no parking signs, I would recommend if the meeting takes place with you and, and Mr. Alciotis and Mr. Ryan, he would be the gentleman to start that conversation with he and the uh, safety officer from the police department. Yes, and we we broached that in a conversation last Thursday uh, with them, and we would like to follow through on that. We think it would be a good idea. Thank you. Anything further? Not for me. Anybody from the public out there that has any comments or input that they would like to speak at this time? Yes, I would like to, if possible. My name is John Louise at 46 Davis Ave. Go ahead, John. Um, uh, sorry, I uh, I got some issues, and it's hard to start because my plan was, you know, to come with an agenda. I don't do well speaking publicly, but just listening to them talk, getting on the last point they said, I would like anybody to go drive in and follow the sign in and take a right, go to the end and turn around and try to back into the third door um because that's what the 55 foot trailers do to the dollar store weekly because they said they have videos in space there's not enough space for them to pass through it let alone turn around in it <laughs> so that surprised me that they said that and as far as the safety officer just to mention the top of the street needs a crosswalk uh, but besides that sorry that just came up Okay, is there anything else? Uh, yeah, I apologize. My notes got jambled. If someone wants to go for a second, I kind of messed up my notes. I apologize. So if someone else could continue, I would like to come back if possible. Thank you. I'm sorry. Okay, no, no problem. Is there anyone else that has a comment, a need, a question resolved? Mr. Yes. Um, for the same gentleman last time, he was talking about water coming in on his property, and I was wondering, uh, was that addressed, or what, what's going on there? Hi again, it's John Louise. Uh, they had, they wanted me to sign a proposal saying that they would fix the fence and then put up some type of curbing or something to alleviate the water after 60 days or when the project started or anything, and uh, my my problem is is what do I keep doing about the rain every time it comes in? So nothing has been addressed. So no agreement or anything like that because I'm going to have you know twenty thirty thousand dollars worth of current damage. So you know I mean to continue every time it rains. But since the last time we talked, you know my basement hasn't got flooded, but the whole yard got wet. All trash is coming from there. I was, one of their trees broke, landed on my branch and broke. It landed in my neighbor's yard, but it was from my tree and their tree. So I went over and cut it up, rented a truck to bring it to the town to dump it. I couldn't get it all out of there, caused a fight between the neighbor. Now, these are trees that are pretty much dead that we've asked them to get out forever. Um, and then they send me a, um, a picture saying that, you know, I left this mess. Yeah, I couldn't clean it all up. I'm sorry. I'm physically disabled. I did what I could. And I cleaned up all the trash that was along my fence and put it on the curb. Um, and they had to send someone to sweep it. It's like, well, great. You know, who's going to keep doing it every week when it happens to me? But, you know, on that situation, that's my response on that subject. Nothing has been done. It just keeps happening. I've been saying this for seven years, but suddenly they want to talk to us and you know, take these things up. 
you know, they have no problem letting it damage my property for years. So I'm the only one, all the water that comes out goes directly in. They fixed the gutter. Well, one of the gutters they fixed that was literally ripping out the concrete from the loading dock. They fixed the gutter and made it go a different way, which is actually worse. It comes directly at the curbing that's there. It's a little curbing, speed bump of a curbing, uh, which I had a good one. They knocked it down to put this little one in, but that's beside the point. Um, all the water basically would just come into my yard and flood out my yard. So I have to go to the corner of my property, lift the fence because that's the lowest point. And, you know, shit, trash, everything keeps coming in all the time. And, I mean, this is seven years I've been complaining about this. But now that they want to do something, it's suddenly an issue. But, no, I have no agreement. I'm sorry to continue talking. Okay. Thank you, John. You got your notes squared away? Was there, was there anything else? Yeah, basically it's that. Um if they ever want to talk about they've looked at the notes and have take pictures, please ask a tractor trailer driver because I can sit here right now and hear trucks come because they're scratching into the trees. The two parking spots that they spoke of uh, would be good to make it so the guys can get in. But, yes, these drivers hit every fence. You'd be surprised what they do hit um, all the time. So when someone says, oh, a driver couldn't have done that, it's like realistically, let's be real guys. Like, these are real people, you know? These are subcontractors, not, you know, everybody makes mistakes. Um, the fencing, they came to replace a section of my fence that was damaged, has been damaged. Um, I didn't know about it, and I let my dog out, and he got off my property because I went to look for my dog, and he was in the yard because yeah. they were replacing the fence I wasn't aware of. But You brought that up before, John, yeah? We're aware of that. Um, that's, that's really about it. I mean... Okay. But my one thing is we have to call a number. Do we have to go through hoops to basically tell them that there's a driver there or we're having an issue? Or do the manager have to go through hoops? Because they said they had to beat it into the managers or, you know, they kept on saying that. So it makes me sound like the manager had to be forced to do this. So what's our, what do we got to do? Call a number, then call this person, contact us. But we don't really want to take the police to come to get a driver who's parking their truck all night back there we don't want to do that because it's a waste of you know public money no need for that so i just don't know what their plan is and what we have to do as citizens to you know if we have an issue or pro problem right now they want to address it but for all the years i mean they don't even send a landscaper behind our business and they probably haven't for about a couple of years now but now they want to you know but that's about all thank you thank you john mr cochran do you have anything to add or Uh, good evening, Mr. Porter. This is John Carter for Davis at uh, one of the abutters. Um, I, I, uh, John, you're coming through well broken up. Stepped up and come to the plate. However, um, they've been in business out there for. Yeah, the connections, uh, my connection has been horrible tonight. Um, I don't know what's going on with that either. John, if you want to just come to my house, you can use my computer. I, I, if I was home, I would do that. Okay. Anything major, okay. John? Anyone can hear me. I'm glad that. I just need to make sure that. Things. Is people John, you're getting no information out of you. I'm gonna call. Call. Mr. Any of these uh, procedures we put in place have some sort of teeth in them, because it hasn't worked in the in the second uh, at the works out. We just had the big one. Just. Okay, and the last thing is, um, I agree that there is not enough room to turn 18 wheel tractor trailers around out there. Um, evidence of that is the, the damage to my fence, the damage to other people's property, and uh, the trees. Um, and hopefully, and 
and I'm sorry for the uh, technology issues I'm having tonight. <clears throat> thank you. Mr. Yes. That's it. Yes, thank you. That's it. Okay. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Petrakowski. Thank you. Um, obviously, there's just a couple of unresolved uh, issues with a couple of the neighbors and uh, a client, a tenant, landlord uh, discussion, and one of the uh, tenants. Uh, going back to the actual plan, uh, as far as like the parking and the and the uh, movement within the parking lot, uh, I appreciate what you're doing for the guardrail. Uh, I think that's a, a really a, a step up. Put the green chain link fence there and and uh, clean up that guardrail. I think that'll help a lot. Uh, Paul, are there any other any other uh, outstanding issues uh, as far as uh, movement within the parking lot or parking, um, pedestrian walkways, things like that that are unresolved that we need to to discuss uh, and. Um, Oh, on yeah, that was that was. And are there any are there any? I'm not sure, but I don't believe there are any waivers here, right? Um, the applicant did not request any waivers from the site plan review uh, requirements. Um, I believe the the issues that were discussed at the prior hearings have been addressed. Uh, what remains appears to be um, some outstanding issues between um, the owners and the operators, the owners of the property and Big Y on operational issues um, that have apparently been problematic for many years and, and unfortunately were not adequately addressed by the owners or the, uh, the operators of the Big Y. Um, and this now seems to be uh, kind of coming back to haunt them. I, I, I don't wanna see a good project um, um, not go forward because of a lot of bad history. Uh, I'd like to look at what we can do to move forward um, and resolve these issues. Um, so at this point, what we have is, is some uh, concerns expressed by uh, Attorney Valenzuela and, and the abutters to the rear on Davis Ave confirming that, that they don't believe that there's enough room for tractor trailers to make adequate deliveries or um off to access the dumpster and and we'll resolve that hopefully um we'll have a meeting we'll bring in um the town engineer to give um an objective evaluation of the adequacy of uh, uh the loading area to the rear of the building uh off of davis ave um with respect to mr louise's concerns about flooding uh apparently they did work on the gutters to the back of the building but that was only one piece of uh, what they proposed to alleviate the flooding. It's my understanding that the plan calls for um, a double graded catch basin that will intercept the runoff um, coming off, sheet flowing off of the back of the, the uh, parking lot and, um, and that that curbing will hopefully um, prevent any continued flooding onto Mr. Louise's property. So some of the work has been done, but the majority of it, the big thing that they're proposing to do, as I understand it, hasn't been done yet and won't be completed. It would be completed as part of the project, not prior to the start of the project. Um, so it appears that um, you know the applicant has addressed the concerns that that the staff um, and the department uh, have have raised during the review process. There is the outstanding issue of um, pedestrian access and they've agreed to continue to work on that and I would address that through a condition. Um, we're going to want to see a as a condition um, construction truck traffic route plan that would be reviewed and approved by the the DPW and the police safety officer. Um, I would like to have the contact sheet that was provided to us by the applicant listing names and phone numbers of people to call for various types of complaints. Um, as a condition of approval, I'm going to recommend that the board require that the applicant send that contact sheet to all of the uh, the residents on Davis Ave so that they'll have that in the event that there's continued um, noise uh, and noise type violations. Um, 
Mr. Corcoran did send a message um, through the chat box during the hearing indicating that that just last weekend there were more noise violations. I, I you know, from where I'm sitting, I can't I, I don't know whether that that's true or not, but it, it seems to be a consistent complaint that we've had. Um, so I, I, I hope that the um, the owners and Big Y can start new with the abutters and um, there needs to be a leap of faith from the abutters that these issues will be addressed and we will try to provide a con conditions of approval that that um, have some teeth to make sure that these these issues will be resolved in the future and won't continue um, because we we still have some outstanding issues um, between um, uh, Bay State Liquors and and the neighbors to the rear at this point, it might be best for the board to uh, continue the hearing to our next meeting to see if we can um, work on resolutions to these outstanding issues before our next meeting on September 14th. Do anybody want to make a motion to continue? Mm -hmm. that? To um, postpone until the 14th of September at what time, Paul, would be convenient? Um, I don't believe we have anything on the agenda yet, Pat, do we? We had a sign earlier. So, Paul, I believe, I believe just the continuation of the sign, and I think we're meeting with um, Kerry from the uh, Neponset River Watershed Association. All right. So. Um, why don't we continue recommend that the board uh, vote to continue this hearing until September 14th at 7:15 p.m. Can I on my motion 7:15. Do I have a second? September 14th. All right. Second. Thank you, Brian. All in favor? Aye. 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 Now, now roll call on that, Mr. Hatchy. Aye. Mr. Bamber? Aye. Mr. Patchikowski? Aye. Mr. Sheehan? Aye. And the chairman is aye. Five zero on the vote to continue to September 14th at 7.15 p.m. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Let me get back to my agenda on page 74. Mr. Chairman, the next agenda item is an informal discussion with the property owners of 60 Union Street and uh, his, his engineer. Uh, the owner has been uh, marketing his property for the last several years. Um, we've been approached by um, several potential buyers asking you know, what the property could be used for. And the owner um, would like to try to move forward with a residential subdivision. He submitted a uh, um, a concept plan, and I took a look at it. And the plan um, didn't didn't meet all of the requirements of the subdivision rules and regulations. And in particular, the width of the right of way was narrower than what uh, we require. Um, we currently require, I think, a 55 foot right of way um, for a residential subdivision with this many lots. This this proposed cul-de-sac, uh, as shown on the plan that, that Pat is bringing up, um, proposes a 30-foot right-of-way. This, this new roadway would essentially be like a common driveway. It would provide access to two homes. Um, and so when the owner asked whether or not the planning board 
would be willing to entertain a waiver to allow the, the width of the right of way to be narrower than what's required in the regulations. I told them that um, I would recommend that they have an informal meeting with the board and try to solicit some feedback from the board about um, that particular waiver and any other waivers. Um, so at this point, I'd like to turn it over to um, to the owner of uh, 60 Union Street and, um, and his engineer. Thank you, Paul. Can you hear us? Yes. Go ahead. Okay. So, um, uh, good, good evening, um, um, planning board members, Mr. Chairman, and um, Paul. Um, uh, the uh, town of Norwood uh, uh, planner. My name is Hushman Afshar uh, from Taj Engineering LLC, and here with me is uh, Mr. Lorenzo Quinones, the owner and soon to be the applicant. Uh, for this project. Um, the <clears throat> a plan which is which is in front of you is, um, as you can see, is a very concept plan and uh, uh, quite preliminary. And since actually submission of this plan, uh, informal submission or emailing to the office of the uh, uh, planner, uh, we made some some quick revisions, like uh, widening uh, the right of way, the proposed road, roadway right of way from 30 feet to 40 feet, and some minor adjustments to <clears throat> reduce uh, the amount of relief we are seeking for our waivers. Um, the total area um, of, of the land that Mr. Queen Nunes at this point would like to uh, develop now uh, at this point in his life that he really wants to hopefully use this property as his uh, retirement account uh, at this point in his life. <clears throat> the total uh, parcel area of the land is about 4.4 acres out of which um, two acres is uh, wet and uh, 2.4 acres is dry. Um, uh, the <clears throat> resource areas were, uh, were, were flagged last year, but as a result of uh, mm, mm, the health situation and the pandemonium, everything got delayed. And uh, <clears throat> now we are trying to see uh, hopefully what can be done. The, um, the existing house, which is shown right at the center of the plan to the, to the left of the proposed roadway, uh, <clears throat> that's correct. Uh, it's uh, an existing house, is one story word, and uh, uh, the owner himself lives in there and he's going to uh, live in there himself and his wife. They are both senior citizens and uh, they find it most uh, acceptable, suitable, convenient for them to uh, stay in. <clears throat> the, um, the roadway, a 40 foot wide uh, uh, roadway, right away roadway is only 240 feet long. Uh, with a hydrant, as you can see, right at the very entrance of that roadway. So uh, the cul-de-sac, even though it has got a diameter of 80 feet diameter, um, <clears throat> um, is uh, more than enough for the two only two houses which is being proposed uh, just fronting the cul-de-sac. Uh, so obviously this roadway is not going to be used uh, for, let's say, 
four vehicles. Um, if you want to continue, I mean, to calculate the um, uh, uh, volume of the traffic service, and uh, it's it's pretty adequate for for that kind of use in terms of traffic traffic service. Um, if a fire truck needs to get in, the pumper can either stop right at the hydrant, which is 200 feet, 250 feet from these houses, or you can easily head in and back out. Um, all the three houses, and of course, lot one has plenty of frontage on Union Street itself. All these houses um, uh, will have easy connection to uh, existing utilities, which is on Union Street, eight inch water, eight inch sewer, two inch gas, and a very functional 24-inch uh, drain and drainage system. Um, <clears throat> the reason, one of the one of the beauty of well, I'm sorry, one of the advantages of the uh, 4 feet right away, and as a result of that, uh, we are proposing to have a 34-feet roadway, 34-feet wide roadway would be uh, the minimum. Uh, adverse impact to the resource areas, uh, which is, as you know, um, by uh, 380 wetland conservation, um, <clears throat> uh, uh, according to the uh, you know MGL, uh, the laws and regulations of uh, Commonwealth of Massachusetts, is highly respected. It's a beautiful piece of land. There is a brook in the back. And all these proposed dwellings are well within the outer riparian zone. And nothing, no improvement, uh, no work is proposed within the inner riparian zone. Also, all the proposed work are, no, I take that back, I'm sorry. The lot one, the house in lot one is out of the 100 foot buffer zone and also uh, the proposed activities in law two is out of the, uh, <clears throat> it's between between 50 and 100 foot buffer zone. And uh, the third lot, the house is um, um, partially in 150 foot buffer zone. I know this is planning, but not conservation, but I'm trying, what I'm trying to say that when this general conceptual layout was being made, um, all the resource area and environmental issues uh, was was kept in mind. Um, <clears throat> there is the stopping this the stopping distance while coming out of this roadway, and they have we have plenty of plenty of a stopping distance, several hundred feet easily. And the slope of the roadway would be hardly 3% uh, from um, Union Street towards the cul de sac. Um, I already mentioned the utilities, <clears throat> that they are all easy connections. And uh, the houses, the footprint houses are very much, very modest, uh, nothing. A huge, uh, you know, 35 by 50 or somewhere in that neighborhood. A very standard, good old American single family home with uh, three or four bedrooms. Um, other than that, I I would like to stop here. And my my children always tell me that you talk too much. So I don't want to do that tonight. So I stop here and um, thank you for listening. You're welcome, sir. Anyone have a little input they'd like to put in? Mr. Mr. Sheehan. Yes, thank you. I just had a, on that roadway that goes in, uh, I know it's 30 feet and we 
usually do knock it down from the 55 foot right away. And I just, out of curiosity, what is um, up at Power Station and some of those others that we've, what is the width of some of those that we brought down in size, if Paul knows or Patrick? I would have to look it up. I don't know it offhand. I I don't remember what um, what the board has done with waivers in the past, but we can check on that. Okay. I can see where we found the 55 feet not to be necessary, certainly. And I'm just wondering, is 30 adequate? So, may, may I, Mr. Chairman, may I? Yes. My apologies. Uh, like I said, consider that 30. 40. So the actual, once we make a formal submission, the right of way for the road will be 40 feet, not 30 feet. We wanted to get on the agenda and one of my engineers put this together. And when I looked at it this morning, I noticed that we could go with 40 feet right away. And if you can, why not? Let's, let's release to ask for. So, so it is 40. It is going to be a 40 foot right up. Thank, Thank you. you. Yes, Mr. Patrikowski. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Uh, so, a couple of points on I, I maybe I, I didn't hear uh, the the current. I don't have a ruler, a scale ruler with me. The diameter of the cul-de-sac is what, as shown? The, the, the diameter of the cul-de-sac, as shown, is 80 foot, sir. 80 feet, OK. That's, uh, that's we've done that before. Uh, and you on the uh, first page, it said you had uh, some uh, issues for lots two and three. Uh, with frontage what were the um what are you what would be your current frontages now on two and three yeah it's 125 all, required uh, but what we what are you showing 125 foot sir all of them lot one will be lot one will have i mean needless to say 340 feet just on union street and the right. other two lots they will be at least 126 feet a frontage yes sir oh okay because I, I, again i don't have a scale ruler and, and it said that you had some issues with that so you real you don't have issues with frontage uh if the cul-de-sac was no. at 80 feet yes sir paul on it if 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 we were um if we were to go to a, say a 40 foot right away, or even a 35 or a 30 foot, and they put a 24 or 22 foot, say a 22 foot uh, uh, pavement, um, would this be a, would this be a private drive or would would it actually? I mean, we're we're going to build it to sub con, you know, subdivision control standards, correct? Yes, yeah, so it, it would it would need to be built to. Um the standards of the planning board rules and regulations with the exception of anything that the board decided to waive. I, I know in other towns that I've worked in, um, a 40 foot right of way is usually what's required for small minor subdivisions like this. Um, even in, in sometimes I've worked in down the Cape, they, they would allow them to do like a gravel road um, for a common driveway situation like this. And so a 40 foot right away would would be adequate. Uh, it, it, the board would need to decide whether constructing the full cul-de-sac was even necessary, given that the road would basically be a common driveway that would Y off. Um, there would need to be sufficient space for um, bigger vehicles to kind of turn around. And, and that's something that we could talk about later. Um, the width of the pavement at, at 24 feet would be more than adequate. Um, yeah. It's just a short distance. And so if there were two cars approaching on the driveway at, at 24 feet, it would work fine. It would even work fine at, at, at a narrower width. Yeah, 22 would work actually for that. Um, 
Right. We did something, I don't know if, Paul, if you were on board or it was Steve Costello, but Dr. Fishman's property uh, down at Nickel Street, uh, where there's kind of a common driveway, we, is this kind of the same type of thing we're looking at? Well, that's not a named street. Uh, and they don't have frontage on, on Nichols, uh, not Nichols, but uh, Parkway. Um, is this kind of the same thing? That this would not be a named street? So the planning board could, could tell the applicant that um, they don't think a road like this should be accepted as a town road. And, and many towns do that currently. Um, and so that's something that could be worked out in the, uh, in, in the approval process to just make it clear that the town really doesn't want to go and plow and maintain what's basically a common driveway. So that, that could, could be worked out in, in the approval process. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're welcome, sir. Mr. Hatchie? I don't really have any questions at this time. I'll watch this one develop. Thank you. Profit? Mr. Bamba? Uh, well, I, I think I'm a fan of... Uh, you know, less pavement is better. Um, you know, I think it, as long as we go by the rules and, and um, you know, the fire department has access and everything's on the up and up, I think, I think that'd be fine. Other than that, I don't have many questions. Well, Mr. Chairman, I actually do have a question. I just came to me. Um, if there's a narrow right of way, is there a, a, any uh, a, 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 a intervention on whether or not cars can park along the spur gaining entrance? Um, in other words, is there street parking on a narrow right of way in this type of roadway? Well, as this turns proposed here, it's going to be their driveway. So, so they can do what as they will. So if there's if there's a 40 foot right of way and 24 feet of pavement, it does provide space on either side um, of the pavement to allow for um, you know someone to park, and that's where um, utilities would probably be underground utilities would be located uh, adjacent to the pavement on either side. Okay, safety shoulders. Yeah, safety shoulders. Yeah. Well, I don't like it. Um, we're doing. We're beginning to look like the town of Canton with these pork chop lots and that type of stuff. And the waivers. You start with the waiver on the road with. Then they're going to be looking for the waiver on the granite curbing. They're going to be looking to keep changing. Do they have? Are they in possession a title? To the wetland area up above They're building a house within the hundred yes, we do. Upper. yes we do we we as shown on the plan if i understand the question correctly as it's shown on the plan we uh, the applicant owns the property up to the the tread of the brook to the center line of the brook okay and that and the he, narrow, and the, and the, he owns uh, number 60 also yes 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 he does okay i just i just don't like the sizes the waivers just plus never mind what the conservation issues are going to be and like i say the, the cul-de-sac the fire department we don't we don't want to set up a situation that they have to then back out we have do these cul-de-sacs that they have to either a hammerhead or this and they can turn around within the hammerhead i just i just don't like these and like I say, we're just gobbling up all the land 
and crowding and over overcrowding the land with this type of subdivision. Okay. Anybody else? Mr. Chairman. Yes. I would I, I would agree with you on on the uh, overcrowding and the it's it's basically islanded behind these existing houses and it's on conservation land it's kind of it is what it is i i don't see it as a piece of property that's prime for development and let's leave it natural anyone else Okay. Thank you for coming in, sir. Um, can I have another 60 seconds or 45 seconds? Yes, you may, sir. Okay, well, the I just want to make a couple of quick corrections. The waivers that we are going to it's not probably on the plan which was submitted um are only related to the road the width you know, right away and the roadway and the cold stack no other waivers are going to be requested and uh, have been discussed also the lots are one acre at least one acre they are well over one acre, and the smallest one is almost 40,000 square foot, which is lot two. And they are big lots, except, of course, the, uh, the existing dwelling. And, of course, as you know, mm, you know, the owner will go through the process with Conservation Commission, whatever they say, and uh, a few years ago, the Conservation Commission has already approved once the ANRAD, but then the owner, through some personal issues, they could not follow through, and uh, uh, the, the project was, um, he was resting on, 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 on his plan. Thank you for your time. You're welcome, sir. Anyone else? Yes, I, I want to say something regarding the fire uh, truck issue. Okay, uh, introduce yourself. My name is Lorenzo Quinones. I'm the owner. Okay, and uh, I'm the one that uh, is presenting this to you. Um, basically, uh, there is a hydrant at the very uh, beginning of the road. Okay, to which uh, a pumper, uh, you know, uh, a fire truck can actually hook up to it. And they run a hose to each one of these properties, okay, uh, which is done all the time. Okay, he doesn't have to drive the truck in there. I don't see uh, any reason for that. First of all, and second of all, okay, uh, you know the the maintenance of the wetlands is something very important, and it has to be done, especially if somebody uh, private uh, owns a piece of it, will keep cleaning it and, 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 and the upkeep of the, of, the, of the book area and everything else. Okay, I myself have been picking up trash from, uh, from, from the brook where people are actually on the other side of throwing trash into the brook. Okay, uh, in, 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 in maintenance of the woodlands, I think it, it's a good thing, okay, to have individual owners, okay, clean and maintain their properties in, in, in pristine uh, condition, okay? That's all I have to say. It's a big, big area, okay? And uh, in, 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 in honestly, it's, it's abused by some people, even uh, on, the, on the parking lots behind it, which are commercial parking lots, that, that picked up tires. They throw tires, okay, into the, into the brook. We have picked them up and I have a stack of them, okay? Uh, how long is that going to keep? Uh, uh, I think it's a good thing, uh, in my opinion, where somebody is actually going to maintain this property, 
the way it's supposed to be maintained, okay? And it takes a lot of work. It, you know, it's, it's nice to say, well, it's, you know, leave it pristine. It, it's not left pristine, it's being used as, as a dump site, okay? Uh, that's uh, one issue, and that's the reason uh, why I feel uh, uncomfortable uh, when uh, you know you say that you know you don't like the project. Okay, Chair? anybody else? Mr. Chair. Yes. Um, I. Th if at all possible, I think I'd like to take an actual look at the property at some point. Feel free. Yes, it is possible. The owner will obviously has no issue with that and uh, the members of the planning board and other members of the other boards uh, of the uh, uh, local municipality have uh, the right of entry onto the property uh, for a site visit. If you like, uh, even the owner or myself uh, could be there uh, if you have any questions. Okay, Rob, is that good for you? Yes, thank you. This, this is just a concept plan that they're, you know, in a in, in uh, discussion phase so yeah take a look thank you next item on the agenda thank you very much good night thank you good night good night, good night. Mr. Chairman, we have uh, Ted Brovitz here with us tonight, and he's going to give the board an update on the Route 1 um, rezoning project and on um, uh, a brief discussion on uh, rezoning for the hospital. Uh, thank you, Paul. Uh, I've got some slides if you want to share your uh, screen with me. If not, then I can just sort of talk through them without uh, visual prop. Should be able to. Pr oh, there you go. Everyone see that? Probably not. No. Can't see it. Let me see if I can. You can see it, Ted. I can, can see, see it. it. Yeah. Some reason I can't see it. <laughs> Um, I can't seem to move it to where I want to move it. Okay. Can you see it now? Everyone see it? No. Yep. No? Yeah. Ted, are you just showing the PowerPoint? Yeah. I can see I it. Can it. I can yeah. see it. It's awfully small, but I can see it. Okay, is that better? Yes. Okay. Yes. 
All right, so yeah. uh, we, as you know, we've all been working on the uh, Route 1 uh, zoning uh, uh, projects. And uh, last month, we talked a little bit about the, uh, the overall vision plan and uh, some of the trends and conditions, as well as sort of a, a general layout of some of the zoning ideas that, um, that we've been working on. Since then, um, we basically put together a draft of the new zoning for Route 1. And actually tomorrow I should have it out for Paul and staff to take a look at and then uh, on to the planning board for your review as well. So um, let's get that out to tomorrow and, and so that we can get that thing uh, vetted with the planning board. Basically, uh, what we're doing is we are taking the existing highway business district uh, together with uh, the manufacturing, the limited manufacturing uh, district that is located on the or nearby the uh, Route 1 corridor. So those frontage uh, properties in those three different zones will can be combined into uh, all, uh, new, new zoning district called the Blue Star Highway District. Um, in addition to that, at the key intersections, we will have, um, we'll apply the mixed use overlay district, which obviously, as you know, was adopted last year at town meeting uh, for the central business district. So we are going to uh, use that overlay district at these key intersections, including Everett and University, uh, Ellis Avenue, Pleasant Street, Access Street, uh, Dean Street, Moore Street, and Summer Street, Summer Street. And basically the idea there is that as, as key intersections and as connections to surrounding neighborhoods and to public transportation, uh, it provides an opportunity to create sort of an up, sort of upgraded, sort of an upscale uh, mixed use area with commercial um, being focused on the frontage itself and then up above and upper stories or behind that um, some residential use. So it's mixed use and commercial uh, that, that is, 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 is focused on, on the corridor itself and then you know, deeper into the lots, you know, there's an opportunity for uh, mixed use as well as some residential development. So under the sort of, uh, you know, that sort of process, that sort of uh, um, uh, direction in terms of land use, uh, we've made changes to the uh, table of use under section three. Um, pretty much in terms of the, the overall uses, it stays mostly the same. Uh, the exception is that we are allowing some degree of multifamily and mixed use. Um, particularly focused at these key intersections. Uh, there's one level restrictions along the frontages. We want to preserve those areas for a commercial activity, particularly a commercial that is oriented and accessible, such as restaurants and shops and other uh, types of services that really rely on the visibility and the traffic volumes along Route 1. Uh, we don't want that to be covered with residential area de developments. We really want to focus on the commercial opportunities it presents. Um, but that being said, uh, you know, allowing for some multifamily mixed use areas uh, in these designated special uh, uh, mixed use overlay districts at the intersections. Uh, we've also separated off the offsite vehicle storage into a new section, section 7.8. Um, and I have completed that draft and hopefully that'll get to the planning board uh, sometime very soon. I think that uh, Paul and staff are sort of taking a first glance at it, making sure that we didn't make any major errors and uh, and then off to the planning board for review. Also, the dimensional standards, we have made some changes there. We have uh, made it a little bit easier and flexible in terms of uh, the, the standards for minimum lot size and frontage and some of the setbacks, uh, particularly with the limited manufacturing, which currently uh, has some pretty restrictive dimensional standards, including a three acre minimum lot size, uh, 250 feet of frontage, uh, and so on. And so we're making that, you know, a little bit more, you know, manageable for uh, smaller opportunities. These are really sort of a, a intended, you know, these, these large lot subdivisions or large lot uh, requirements really are you know, sort of a 1980s suburban style uh, industrial park kind of uh, standard and what we're trying to do is provide opportunities for uh, smaller development, smaller industrial and light industrial uses that want to grow and expand in place. Uh, so this provides that flexibility. So if you look at you know where we are today in terms of the 
highway business zone and where we're going with the blue star, we're, we're shrinking down the lot size. Uh, we're shrinking slightly uh, the, uh, the setbacks, um, but at the same time, you know, the, the use of those setbacks um, is either used for, you know, open space, shared use between adjacent lots or buffers and screening from adjacent areas such as residential districts. And the, uh, as far as limited manufacturing, again, going from a three acre minimum lot size uh, down to 10,000 square feet minimum and uh, you know, creating a building envelope that could start out small but get bigger um, as businesses grow and develop. In terms of height, uh, we've uh, set the maximum at 60, uh, but we also have a step back setback requirement, much like we did with the, uh, the Central Business District Mixed Use Overlay District. Um, and basically, so if you're at the setback, which in case of the, uh, the, the, the new uh, uh, Blue Star Highway, it's 20 foot setback in the front and 20 foot setback in the rear, then you have to be uh, at least 60 feet back further behind that to get to the maximum of 60 feet in height um, so that we don't create, you know, sort of what they would call a canyon effect along the, uh, along the corridor or something that would be large on the back side of the property that would be sort of an encroachment onto the adjacent neighborhoods. Um, parking standards are uh, basically, we're trying to encourage um, uh, better connections between the parking lots and the, uh, uh, the buildings and the public sidewalks. Uh, we're encouraging shared driveways uh, between uh, adjacent businesses, as well as shared parking and internal accesses. Uh, we are encouraging, requiring loading areas to be to the side or to the rear of buildings. We really don't want those in front where people are parking or where it can be seen from the corridor. Uh, we're allowing parking structures you know, with design standards attached to them. Um, and then we're following in those designated intersections, uh, the mixed use overlay district standards in terms of uh, the opportunity, if you can prove it to the planning board that you can you can develop your, your business without all of the required parking spaces. You can have some satellite parking. And then for residential, uh, you can have a different configuration uh, it's like called tandem parking, which is sort of back to front parking for individual residential units. On the signs, uh, we're basically keeping the same standards in terms of the size and height, but we're creating a, a, a setback requirement for larger signs. We really don't want a lot of large signs right up on the edge of the right of way, which creates sort of a strip uh, a view of, of the corridor. Uh, but we want sort of modest standing signs, you know, right up on the right of way at 20 foot setbacks. And then the bigger you are, uh, you, you have to be set back a little bit further. So the full size sign in full size and full height would be achieved at 25 feet off the setback or basically 70 feet off of the right of way. What we also want to do is encourage monument signs, these low scale signs where they're you know, sort of a, uh, a masonry foundation, could be have a signboard on top of it, much like we have there an uh, example from Instrem. Um, we, we, uh, we are sort of encouraging that to be closer to the right of way where, where people either walking or driving can see them, uh, they're attractive, um, they don't deter detract from uh, the streetscapes um, and the buildings behind them. So, in terms of the uh, the building envelope and the uh, you know the setbacks, you know what we're focused on really is the front setback and making sure that that creates a nice streetscape for the corridor. So we're looking at deciduous trees, shade trees uh, at every 50 foot on center. Uh, we're looking for a five foot sidewalk or pathway. Uh, to prevent, you know, to encourage uh, mobility, uh, either on a bike or on foot, and we're looking for ground cover. So our, our you know, our uh, goal here is to not to screen the buildings, uh, but to have, you know, good-sized trees over time, where you can see in your car underneath it, you can see the buildings and the, and the the site itself, um, but at the same time, creating some nice enclosure along the corridor and creating an attractive sort of, uh, you know. Uh, uh, view up and down the corridor. In terms of the back, you know, the, the, the 10 foot setback can, ex, can expand to 20 feet if you're up against a residential neighborhood and there are additional screening requirements so that whatever happens on 
on the building lot doesn't impact the neighborhood. And then on the sides, you know, use a 10 foot setback, but uh, we're encouraging shared access and shared internal access and parking on the site. So if uh, you and your neighbor get together and um, are willing to share parking and share access, then you can get some relief from those setbacks. The uh, zoning, uh, uh, the performance standards for the mixed use overlay districts will apply again the, uh, the buffer requirements for uh, commercial uh, districts up abutting residential districts and the transitional building buffer where you're setting back the building um, further away from the property line to the rear where there's where adjacent houses are located. Um, also um, setting up some uh, density standards for different types of uh, residential and mixed uses. In this case, we're allowing townhouses, which are attached single families, uh, multifamilies, uh, live workspaces, which basically are one dwelling unit uh, and, and, and a dealer occupied commercial, uh, commercial unit underneath, uh, mixed use buildings, um, non historic buildings that are being renovated or retrofitted for commercial or mixed use, um, and then historic buildings that could be retrofitted or um, uh, renovated uh, or added to um, or uh, for, for commercial and mixed use. So the, the maximum density uh, for the bigger building to multifamily and the mixed use buildings would be 32 units per acre. Uh, for the smaller units, such as townhouses and live work buildings, it would be 12 units uh, or 16 units by acre. Per acre, and that would be by special permit. The by right would be 12, and then the by right for uh, multifamily mixed use would be 20 units per acre. And again, um, the uh, the mixed use overlay district standards for parking and allowing for uh, some uh, reduction in parking. You know, considering the fact that there's some uh, shared uh, uh, shared parking between mixed use uh, between commercial and residential and mixed use buildings. They have off peak hours, uh, so the chance to reduce some of the spaces, as well as creating uh, tandem spaces uh, for residential uh, units and stack spaces for valet parking. So, again, adding that to the to the new parking standards for uh, these these uh, mixed use overlay districts at the intersections. Um, we also, as I said, we uh, created uh, a draft section 7.8, which handles the off street vehicle storage facilities. Um, as everyone knows, we've got 3000 uh, vehicles being stored in uh, Norwood. Um, and the average size is almost five acres with 300 spaces. Um, and what we're trying to do is um, make sure that, uh, first of all, they're closer to the corridor. We want to restrict them to within a mile of the Route 1 corridor, uh, but also not on the east side or the west side of the MBTA right-of-way. Uh, we don't want them going under the bridges with the uh, park areas. Um, we want them to be locally based uh, dealerships. So class one, class twos that are licensed in Norwood would be allowed to have self, uh, to, allowed to have storage uh, facilities in Norwood. Uh, we don't want to take the cars from other other communities uh, in Norwood. Um, there's a there's a standard for registered unregistered vehicles, a limited time for unregistered vehicles. We're allowing and actually encouraging structured parking. Um, and we have size limitations and incentives, as you can see on this table down below. Um, what we're trying to do is, is incentivize uh, the dealerships to work together. Uh, either on a surface parking facility or a structured facility by giving them more uh, vehicle storage space uh, when they work together in twos and threes or when they're in structured facilities when uh, they get a higher uh, number of, of uh, storage uh, uh, vehicles allowed to be stored in a given facility. So we're not sure if that's the right number or not, but we're sort of using this as a starting point. Again, it creates incentives to reduce the overall number of parking facilities and get dealerships to work together on combined facilities, whether surface or structured. Um, there's also standards uh, for access and lighting, um, as well as uh, security fences and gates, screening, uh, landscaping. So if you're doing a structured parking, 
uh, you have to ensure that it is not visible from any uh, adjacent residential uh, properties or neighborhoods. It's going to be screened uh, from those from those uh, from those properties. Um, there's also requirements to provide provide a parking plan and a landscaping plan, um, as well as sustainable design standards for stormwater um, and even uh, for uh, energy renewable energy on site. So again, we've, we've created the draft for this and uh, hopefully um, we can get through that pretty quickly and make the adjustments and go forward with it. Um, and in terms of the uh, medical district, medical uh, zoning district, uh, we're just starting to look at that and what the hospital's thinking about in terms of you know, short-term and long-term needs in terms of facilities, the size, the types of uh, medical um, uses that could be anticipated there and how that translates into uh, dimensional standards, use standards, streetscape standards, open space standards, and so on. So we're just, you know, essentially basically getting a, getting a sort of a sense from the hospital. We had a, our first meeting last month, and we anticipate having follow-up meetings in the next few weeks uh, to see uh, you know, where, you know, where, they, where they need to go with their, uh, their facilities. So that, in a nutshell, is where we are. Good, thank you. Did, yes. did, the, did the hospital give you any idea as to a frequency of meeting to follow up with them, what the end needs were gonna be? Uh, we didn't, no, we didn't get into specific details or scheduling. Um, we just sort of had a, you know, a basic understanding of that we, uh, we need to act uh, in the short term on some of the things and then long term you know, understanding what they're you know what uh, what they're going to want from this particular site and facility they they obviously are got a lot of work to do in themselves in terms of working with the insurance companies and um, trying to uh, understand what they can expect from resources and where that's going to put them as far as renovating existing buildings and then long term you know adding adding new facilities to the complex so Thank you, Ted. Mr. Alcioda. Do any of the board members have any questions or comments or concerns for Ted on what he just presented on the Route 1 um, rezoning? Uh, I'll be interested to look to see on the plan that gets back to you, only because I couldn't get the, I couldn't get the plan on my on my phone but uh, it sounded very comprehensive okay mr chairman yes to mr P patrickowski sir yeah great i i you know i love the what ted's done here uh my only uh well i got a couple things that uh, i've looked at that i i got a couple of questions on um the the, the main thing is on the mixed use overlay districts which are gonna incorporate the the corners of the intersections. Um, I just gotta again get dig into it and see the the next draft of exactly how much uh, land there around that is gonna be in those mixed use overlay districts. And uh, Ted, you had said that uh, on those those intersections, it would be the maximum would be thirty two per acre. Is that what I heard? Yeah, so I need the. Ernie, the uh, yeah, so the maximum by special permit would be 32 per acre uh, for a mixed use building or for a multifamily building. For the townhouses, it's it's a little bit less, but yeah, that yeah. would be the maximum. Uh, I, I, my guess is that Ted, that that's not going to cut it down on Route One. Uh, I think we're finding that we're getting some inquiries uptown that that developers are saying, you know, we're 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 not it's not enough but we're kind of hesitant we haven't done anything up uptown yet to make any changes but i think maybe on route one uh, it's always easier to, to pull it back than it is to increase it i guess you know what i mean so sure. i think maybe as a, as a board we'll discuss the uh the density down on route one maybe it, maybe i know i'm uh out on an island here but we may want to increase it 
and you know my whole philosophy is what's the building look like you know what's the what's it look like from the street right yeah you may be right ernie you know maybe 32 may have to go to 36. uh we need to talk to some of the local developers and property owners to see you know whether they think they would use it i mean we don't want to put it out there and have no one use it so it's got to be it's got to be uh, the right number um and i was hoping to have the zoning map here tonight, but I don't have it. I should have it tomorrow for sure and get that out to everybody so you can see the specific boundaries of not only the mixed use overlay districts, but also the, the blues, the, the blue star highway, the new, the new district for the for the corridor. Uh, so you get a sense what properties are, are included in it. Just so everybody's clear, if you are on Route 1 now and you are a highway business, you are now you have been traded you are now going to be part of the blue star highway district correct that's correct yeah right. as i said most of the the, the uses are, are the same we're just adding some additional uh mixed use in in residential in the right places um and we're we're decreasing the dimensional standards but we're also sort of focused on the streetscape treatments along these along the corridor that's really the the the, the the, the, the main part of this proposal. As a threshold question, is the board comfortable with the name that Ted's proposing, the Blue Star Highway District? I was curious where it came from, but I guess it is the Blue Star Highway. I always call it the Boston Providence Highway, but I, 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 I never know. I, I don't know if it's if the, we should call it the Blue Star District or Route One or the Route One Highway, you know, Route One Highway District. I don't know what would make more sense. Ted, can yes. you explain your rationale for uh, proposing that name? Well, it's it's the Blue it is a Blue Star Highway. It was uh, Route One is you know the whole part of Route One was a Blue Star Highway, which is sort of, I guess, acknowledging uh, making an all acknowledging. I think um you know, the, the world war ii effort i think where it originated from but it's um i just thought that was sort of a catchy title i couldn't think of anything else you know so we can we can make it whatever you want but i thought the blue star highway was kind of a american sort of you know uh patriotic sort of label to it so but it's just a holder it's just a you know a, a placeholder we can we can change it to whatever we want because that, that is, I believe, in a lot of areas on Route 1 in, in different states, they do market the Blue Star Highway. That's right. Right. Yeah, there's even a, a, a I'm, not sure, I'm not sure if it's in Norwood, but there in certain places, there's actually some, uh, some signage in the graphic for the Blue yeah. Star Highway. It probably is in, in Norwood. I just haven't seen it up and down the corridor. No, you haven't seen it. Yeah. Yeah, and just got lost. Yeah, Ernie's not old enough. <laughs> so we will provide the board with copies of the open lot storage bylaw that Ted has submitted to us. Um, I need to, Pat and I need to review it, see if we have any comments before we send it out to the board for review. And then um, Ted will be providing us with uh, the remainder of the bylaw tomorrow or the next day. And yeah. after we take a look at that and give them some feedback, we'll forward that to the board so we can start to position ourselves to be ready for um, a public meeting on this. As, as you know, we are required to hold a public hearing for all zoning amendments. Um, but for this project, we thought we needed to go a little bit further. And, and what was part of the original game plan was to hold a, a bigger public meeting and try to engage the stakeholders on Route 1, the property owners and the business owners and the town officials that have an interest on, on what happens in that area. And we had a discussion last week and, and um, you know, I, I kind of lamented that, that given the circumstances, it's gonna be hard for us to um, get a group of people to come out to a meeting and, and didn't know whether we should attempt to do this type of meeting or to try to, um, you know, reserve uh, the gym at the, at the high school or something, and and try to hold a, a meeting where people can spread out but can still um, come and safely uh, communicate their uh, their questions and concerns. So that's kind of out there for discussion. And and if 
one way or the other, we need to set that date with Ted on uh, when we want to have that meeting and then figure out how we want to do it. Sounds good here. Personally, I'd like to, once we review it and set the meeting date, I'd like, if, if at all possible, I prefer in person, but I, I know not everyone is, um, you know, I think we could do it safely at the junior high, at the auditorium. I mean, even if they'd let us in there, they may not even let us in there. Uh, you know, that's, that's the problem. Um, I mean, we could do it there, but I prefer it live, but who knows, you know. There's, I agree with you, Ernie. Too much lost in this Zoom stuff. Yeah. So I can explore um, the possibility of, of uh, reserving a larger venue. As part of that, I'm going to talk to um, Gal Reese, the director of public health, and, and get her input on whether she thinks that that's uh, something that we, you know, we can go ahead and do safely, or you know, whether or not she thinks we should try to do it remotely. Um, so we'll we'll start to work on that and um, report back to the board at the next meeting of of uh, what we want to do, and and we'll come up with a, a date that works for all of us. Thank you, Paul. Okay. Thank you, Ted. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Ted. Okay. I'll catch up later. Thank you. Have a good Thank night. You. you too. The hour of 825 has, has come and gone a little bit beyond us. We have a status project status for 750 University Avenue Skating Club of Boston. Tom Fanning and uh, Dan Gavoni, are they online? Uh, Mr. Chairman, it's Tom Fanning. I'm here uh, masquerading as Dan Gavoni in my uh, Zoom description. Dan is actually, it is his anniversary. So he is oh, out yeah. with, yeah. with his bride. <laughs> and you're stuck with me, regrettably. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Um, Paul had asked that I come before you folks and um, give you a quick update on the skating club. Also want to spend a moment talking about a recent issue we had out there that we've been communicating and working with Paul to resolve. Uh, the general update, I haven't seen you folks obviously in quite some time. Um, project believe it or not our objective is to deliver that project and occupy it uh september 8th and that that continues to be a reach goal uh i did share an image with with patrick i don't know if he can pull it up to show you guys the high school rank he's able to this is either the second or third coat of ice um, in what's rink three so rink rink three is obviously the multi-use rink that is also doing a lot of hockey um so we've actually got ice on two rinks right now rink one which is the main rink and rink three the project has been pretty substantially impacted by covid and the shutdown was a real that was a tough pill. Uh, we lost about three months on the job, but as importantly, uh, we've also, believe it or not, even with as long as this job was in planning and design, we've had a significant amount of manufacturing and product delays. Um, and then interestingly enough, um, the federal recovery money has uh, impacted uh, the labor market's pretty materially. So, um, as it turns out, unemployment as well as the money you get uh, from the federal government in some cases ends up being more than you can earn if you go to work. Um, so it's been a it's been a really challenging uh, tail end of the project. But the good news is 
We hope to drink, uh, deliver the first two rinks as well as the balance of the facility 9-8. Um, rink two delivers out in September. For those of you who are not aware, there was a quality control issue with multiple batches of concrete on rink two. That rink had to be removed and replaced. Um, but the job is coming together quite nicely on the end. I think you guys will be thrilled uh, when you get a chance to see the facility. One of the things the club has asked to is uh, to the extent that the board would have any interest in seeing the building, you know, we'd be happy to host you out for a tour if that was a, of any interest either before the opening or you know shortly thereafter if you wanted to see the finished product that you guys all worked so hard with us on uh, we'd love to host you um, in terms of so that's our general status uh, we are trying to work through our final permits and sign off and Norwood Fire Department sign off in the next couple of weeks. Um, site landscaping is ongoing. The site is 100% of the binder is down. Landscaping is in progress. Um, Patrick, if you could bring up that plan, if you would, please. We did have uh, one uh, unfortunate event, which we've been communicating with Paul and with Mark Ryan on. Uh, for those of you who are familiar with the site, there was a miscommunication between a uh, one of the subcontractors in the site and regrettably 16 trees were removed um, outside of Al Guest's guidance to the project. Um, the plan you see in front of you is our attempt to recover that. Paul has been coordinating with us. He's engaged a consultant, which the club is paying for, to come up with a remediation plan. The plantings you see sheet north, which is up by uh, University Ave, those plantings are actually new. Um, so the northern buffer parallel to University Ave between the two curb cuts is our attempt to overcome what was a bad mistake that we communicate we self-reported to the town that a mistake was made and we've been working kind of collaboratively with Paul to overcome that problem uh, this plan represents that you know our attempt to do that and it's I, I would describe it as in progress I don't know that Paul and ComCom are completely vested on where we're at but this is a draft that we presented based on a field walk through uh, a week ago or is it two weeks ago Paul yes we received uh, this this revised landscape plan and and for the board members um, I asked Tom to uh, get the project landscape architect to submit a landscape plan um, that would provide some some attractive landscaping at, at the front door of the facility. Um, if you've been by there, you can see that it was completely clear cut. If the board recalls, um, we did have some discussions about how this would be handled in the future. Um, it was uh, a strip of, of vegetation. There was a lot of underbrush and uh, some some large mature trees that were interdispersed with that underbrush. Um, after um, learning that that um, this had taken place, I, uh, wearing my acting conservation agent hat, um, retained uh, uh, an environmental consultant that was uh, the consulting firm that reviewed the project for the Conservation Commission. So we brought them back in since they were familiar with the project. We had an on-site meeting with Tom and Dan Gavoni and, and the project engineers and contractors to try to figure out what to do next. Um, I asked them not to do anything because of um, the steep banks and the and the, the swale had running water in it. It's basically a kind of an intermittent stream. Um, and they held off on doing anything until we were able to come up with a game plan. Um, we have received a report from Mark Mangello from LEC Consulting, 
with recommendations on how to handle um, revegetating this slope. Um, and that report um, is, has been provided to the Conservation Commission last week at their meeting. Um, they took the report under advisement and continued the discussion until their meeting on September 2nd. Um, the landscape plan that, that you saw would in effect be a, uh, a, a modification to the approved uh, site plan. And so um, we are looking at that landscape plan now and, and I took a look at it and, it and it looked pretty good to me. The one problem um, is because of the steep slopes of the, the existing swale, um, the environmental consultants explained to me that, that you can't go dig a huge hole for a, a, a mature tree because the root ball um, is so large and that doing that much excavation on the banks of um, that swale could exacerbate the problems and, and cause erosion and, and sediment loading into that, that swale. So uh, the environmental consultant said they really need to go with smaller trees like one inch, one and a half caliper, and that's part of uh, what's shown on the plan. There were, um, according to, um, to Tom, there were 14 to 16 um, mature trees over six inch in caliper that were removed that shouldn't have been. Um, the direction from Al Getz and the note on the approved plan said that uh, they had to consult with conservation on how to handle this, this vegetated area. And um, they did do that. And um, Al's uh, instructions were to save all the trees that were six inches or greater. So we know that, that they at least need to um, um, replace that many trees and they proposed many more than, than, than 16. Um, this is an issue that's, that's most directly involved with the Conservation Commission. As I said, on September 2nd, they're gonna take this back up and I'll attend that meeting and I'll continue to work with um, the Conservation Commission, with um, North Star and the Skating Club um, and uh, the environmental consultants to get this situation resolved. It was, it was kind of an unfortunate mistake um, but it did create uh, an opportunity for them to have some more attractive landscaping along the road in front of the skating club. I'll, I'll just add, uh, Patrick, if you could throw the plan back up. It, it, the situation is a little bit confusing and you're probably looking at that picture saying, oh goodness. But um, if you start on the curb cut that is sheet left and you go, most of the way through the footprint of the building, you know, so traveling east or sheet right. Um, the actual construction, the approved plan ne ne uh, necessitated a swale, which resulted in all the clearing of that by design, where we made a mistake and did not do a good job is really starting roughly at the right portion of the building working yourself sheet right to the curb cut. A um, little bit confusing, I'm sure you folks, I know you're all live and work in Norwood. You probably drove by the site many, many times. As it turned out, the initial clear and grub on the job was not to the pro appropriate limit of work. So the client and the community and the project team had this misunderstanding of where the actual limit of work was. And the limit of work for the front of the building was actually much further than people understood. On the sheet right in the front boundary, we made a mistake and we cut down some trees we should not have. So we apologize to that. We've apologized to the CONCOM and we're trying to recover. If the board would uh, would like to do a, a tour, um, let me know, and Pat and I can can schedule that. I know I'd like to get in the building and check it out. Um, th is there any questions or comments for Tom about um, either the project update or um, the the landscaping plan that we have that we're looking at now? Well, I think it's you know I first of all. I appreciate the skating club, you know, owning up to it. Uh, I drove by there a couple of times and I said, oh my God. And 
I guess that swell was always there. And, and uh, after the rain, I see how much water is in there. So I see the issue with putting a large, I, my first thing thought was, you know, you broke it, you fix it. So have the, you know, the contractor should put some large caliber trees in there. Um, uh, I'd like to, you know, see that, but like you said, Paul, it's an opportunity now. We're beyond that. You have a, you have an open canvas now, uh, basically you have a blank sheet of paper. So, uh, you know, a real good landscape architect can look at it and you can really do something nice there. You know, you can really, you know, put some ornamentals in there or whatever. I mean, you can really make it nice uh, and you don't have, to. so um, I appreciate you owning up to it, but you know, we gotta, we gotta do something there and I'm sure you will. And, uh, you know, personally as one member of the board, Paul, uh, if you working with the skating club and the architect, if you're, you know, happy with it, you know, run it by the board, but, uh, you know, you, you are the conservation guy, so you would, you'll know what looks good there. Yeah. And yeah, Ernie, Campbell, it's a, oh, I'm sorry. The, uh, the, sorry, Mr. Chairman, the Ernie, so it's a couple of good points. The, the one thing I wanted to just further explain, not to make any excuse for our mistake, because but um, the whole conversation is complicated by this darn gas easement. Um, the gas easement severely impacts uh, the portions of that buffer you see there that can be planted. Um, you might note the dashed line that is just sort of directly below the tree line. So the, the plantings that we're doing, and we, we are trying to do the right thing, the club is trying to do the right thing. Our, the amount that we can plan is pretty heavily constrained by the top of the slope and the edge of the gas easement, just, just for awareness, no, no excuses. No, I didn't realize there was a gas easement there. Yeah, they have a high pressure um, gas transmission line, not distribution, but transmission. And uh, we are foreboding from planting things within that easement yeah. by, by contract, by easement, just for awareness. And that, excuse me, and that, Dan, is on the right side of the corner, that dotted line? Um, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't follow the question. Al, could you repeat the question, please? Yes, on the gas easement, that shows up on the plan on the right hand side of the plan that dotted line that goes through i believe the top of the easement meaning the northern portion of the easement or northern boundary is directly below you can see it's sort of a large dash line below the the new proposed trees oh okay and it and it extends uh, towards the building. It's quite a large easement. Um, it's been, quite frankly, kind of a pain to deal with. But it just provides us, I'll just call it a small palette with which to correct this problem. That's all. But we're, we'll, we'll get it resolved as best we can. Thank you, Dan. No problem. Anyone else on the board have any questions? Well, I just want to say thank you very much for coming in this evening, Dan. And uh, please wish Tom a happy anniversary from the board. <laughs> Will do. I'll pass that along. And um, would again, if you folks would like to come out, we'd love to have you out for a cup of coffee and show you the building if you have any interest. Let me know what makes sense. Um, and we're happy to host. Thanks again, everyone. Have have a great night. Yeah. Patrick, you can bring your double runners. Yeah, we'll get you on the I ice if you want. Other straps. I've been oiling them every year to keep them onto my feet. <laughs>
<laughs> it's it's it, they're gonna be skating and about actually we're a, it's uh, I don't know if folks know this I did not know this there's eight layers of ice on an ice rink <laughs> and we're I we're on the, I think they were the picture you saw there was the third one going down. Mm -hmm. um, so we've got two rinks, rink one and rink three, which is the rink the community will be using, um, heading towards completion, which is great. Yeah, this one's been a tough one. They did away with hockey for this fall, which is unfortunate. I know. I know. It'll be better than yeah, like a little bit. I don't know. I have this. Froggies. have this great rink, but the kids can't use it, which is, um, so, but the club's doing great. For those of you who are not aware, um, they have had, Doug has had tremendous success. He has lured um, two world-class coaches. It's a husband-wife team from California, and they are bringing uh, – what is I, I don't know anything about figure skating but they are bringing uh, a couple of handfuls or what are the top skaters in the united states here to norwood to work out um so it's they've really i think you guys will be impressed with the facility they they're attracting the premier coaching talent in the whole country to come to move here and use the facility which is awesome they bring them out in uh, June and July rather than January and February? Um, no, from what I understand, those, uh, those folks will be here right away. They they have to skate, believe it or not. I don't know how you do this, but um, they're skating with fewer kids on the ice in Alston, and they all have to wear a mask. I, I don't know how you skate with a mask on, but that's what's currently happening. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Well, Again, good night, you. gentlemen. Thank you. Yep. Appreciate your time. Yep. Well, that sounds like a plan if you can put it together for a visit. Okay. Um, if the board members could shoot Pat and I an email. Um, yeah. So Pat and I will come up with some dates and uh, throw them out, and we will try to schedule that with uh, with the skating club. Thank you. So, not, Mr. Chairman, not, our, last, but, our last agenda item is um, Town Council David DeLuca, who's with us, and he is going to talk to us about two pieces of ongoing litigation. Good evening, Mr. DeLuca. Do we need to go into executive session, sir? Yes. Okay, can we... The uh, you no know, the cable people. Would you uh, put us into uh, whatever mode it is for executive? Thank you. Can I get a can I get a nominal and a a motion to uh, go into executive session? Mr. Hatchy, was that you? Thank you. And a second. Mr. Sham, was that you? Yes. Uh, so move that we move into executive session. Thank you. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, roll call. Mr. Pachikowski. Aye. Mr. Bamber. Aye. Mr. Hatchie. Aye. Mr. Sharon. Mr. Sheehan, excuse me. Aye. And the chairman votes aye. Five zero unanimous.